President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that Ukrainian forces have gained combat control of territories in north of Kharkiv region where Russian troops staged an intrusion in May. Our soldiers have now managed to take combat control of the border area where the Russian occupiers entered, Zelensky said in his nightly video address on Friday evening. He made the remarks following the meeting with military and regional officials in Kharkiv city, the capital of Kharkiv region. Zelensky's comments are in stark contrast to the comments by Russian officials. Russian state news agency TASS reported on Friday, with reference to Viktor Vodolatsky, a member of Russia's lower house of parliament, that Russian troops controlled over half of Vovchansk town in Kharkiv region. Vodolatsky also claimed that once Vovchansk was captured, Russian troops would target the cities of Sloviansk, Kramatorsk and Pokrovsk in the neighboring Donetsk region in the east of Ukraine. Located 5 kilometers inside the Russian-Ukrainian border, Vovchansk has been the center for fighting since Russia launched its offensive in Kharkiv region on May 10 and announced opening a new front in the region. Ukraine has evacuated more than 11,000 residents from Kharkiv region since the start of the offensive. Russian forces have captured villages in the area as part of the offensive, with analysts suggesting that Moscow might be trying to get within artillery range of Kharkiv city in the region located around 20 kilometers from the Russian border. Iran's military reveals new details of President Raisi crash. The general staff of Iran's armed forces released the preliminary findings of the investigation into a helicopter crash that killed President Ibrahim Raisi and his delegation, Iranian news agencies Taznim and Mayer reported. An expert investigative committee arrived at the scene the day after the fatal crash and found no signs of bullet impacts or similar damage in the wreckage. The investigators determined that the aircraft had caught fire after it hit the ground, media reported citing Iranian military officials. Raisi's helicopter did not deviate from its designated flight path, according to the findings. Around a minute and a half before the crash, the pilot communicated with the other two helicopters in the flight group. The report stated, adding that nothing suspicious was found in the conversations between the flight crew and dispatchers. More details will be provided after further investigation, the committee added. Raisi was flying in the northwestern Iranian province of East Azerbaijan when his aircraft crashed in the mountainous region, killing everyone on board. Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian and Imam Mohammed Ali Ali Hashem were also on the presidential helicopter. The complexity of the region, fog and low temperature, slowed the search and rescue operation, forcing it to extend through the night, the investigators said. The exact crash site was found with the assistance of drones, they added. Tehran announced that it will hold a presidential election on June the 28th. Vice President Mohammed Mokba has become acting president in the meantime with the approval of Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. The deaths of Raisi and Hossein Amir Abdullahian comes as Iran continues to back militia groups in the wider Middle East to pressure its enemies, namely Israel and the United States. Putin is like Count Dracula. Ukrainian intelligence revealed important facts about his bunkers. Russian President Vladimir Putin has more than one bunker, hence his nickname. Representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Andrei Yusov said this during the telethon. Putin's bunkers. Yes, information about this is known and is constantly updated, he noted. At the same time, he refused to name the number of bunkers used by the Russian president. We will not disclose now, but it is clear that one of the call signs of the Russian president is bunkerny. That is, he loves his business, like Count Dracula hides in these deep dungeons, Yusuf said. Answering the question whether he lets his doubles into these bunkers, the main intelligence directorate representative noted that this does not happen. No, he releases his doubles on other missions where it is not so safe, Yusuf said. Recall, in 2023, the Business Insider published information about Vladimir Putin's bunker near Gelenzik in the Krasnodar territory. It is a billion-dollar, 190,000-square-foot complex perched on a cliff overlooking the Black Sea. The publication noted that, Despite all this royal luxury and castle defense, the palace builders seemed to have neglected one important detail. They failed to hide plans showing two complex tunnels running underneath the palace complex, plans that any competent state security apparatus would fight tooth and nail to maintain. They were posted publicly on the RUNET, 
Metro Style, a Russian contractor that is now defunct, posted plans on its website in the early 2010s. They could be viewed online back in 2016. The underground complex under Putin's palace consists of two separate tunnels connected by elevator that descends 50 meters underground. Architectural plans show that the thick concrete tunnels are provided with enough fresh water, ventilation and extensive cables to support VIP residents for days or weeks. Journalists also suggested that the tunnels could withstand bombs and chemical attacks. In particular, the drawings show six separate ventilation shafts for air supply. There is a road next to the tunnel complex that could presumably be used to transport supplies.